Hello all and welcome to Wow Crochet yet again for another tutorial. My name is Mary and in today's tutorial we are working on part 6 of our Rustaman Vibrations Poncho. Oh, this is very nice. <laughs> I like very much. <laughs> I can't help myself. It's, I'm just so excited at the way it looks. Um, the actual collar itself or the neck edge itself is actually a duplicate of those uh, what is it? Two, three rows? One, two, three, four, five rows. <laughs> five, five. <laughs> Wake up, Mary. So that is actually a duplicate of that. It's flipped and it's popped there. Okay? Except I used the greens the other way around because I wanted that green to match that. If you know what I mean, I wanted it to look like it matched. You can use whatever colours you like. And these are the colours I use. There's your greens. Oh. And there's what's left of my cream. And I tell you what, talk about yarn chicken. Um, <laughs> so there you go. And there it is. The neck edge looks simply divine, does it not? I mean, I think it does anyway. That just could be me. <laughs> anyway, um, there you go. So that is exactly what we're doing today. For those of you joining us new and have not made our Rustaman Vibrations poncho, sorry about the loading there, um, I will pop a link to the playlist. The very first link you see will be the playlist. And you can actually complete our um, poncho with us. We're still not finished yet, guys. Uh, like I mentioned um, towards the end of the tutorial, um, we did just this collar part right here. Now what we're going to do, the next tutorial will be part seven, where we're gonna elongate it a little bit and maybe pop a, border, a few border rows. Now, in reference to this section here, I did say that we would try it on whilst we are doing it. No, we're not going to do that. We're going to try it on on part seven. And you can see that in the mirror with me. We're going to try it on together. When I say together, you try it on your end and I'll try it on my end. And I'll show you exactly how it should be fitting. And I mentioned that if it doesn't fit, all we need to do is make some drawstrings, popping them through here, like so, like if it's too loose, pop the drawstrings through, have them dangling here. If it's too loose, you tighten up your drawstrings and that will tighten everything up the top. I think when I tried this on earlier, it looked perfect on me. Um, and I'm an extra large, so that's really tightened up. Oh, I shouldn't have said that out too loud, but <laughs> there you go. So that really has tightened up for me. However, if you are still finding that is too loose, that's when we'll discuss making a drawstring for this. All right, so don't stress too much if it's too loose for you. Do let me know on our lives. We do have our lives on Wednesday afternoons at 4 p.m. and Saturday mornings at 10 a.m. Um, you can have a chat with us and we have a lot of fun and we're a bit silly, but you know, that's what it's all about. Um, <laughs> but if you're a little shy to do that, you're welcome to leave a comment in the comment section down below of this tutorial. And you're also welcome to send me some private messages via Facebook, our page on Facebook, um, well crochet that is or via Instagram we have well crochet on Instagram as well so don't be shy if you want to ask me any questions regarding the poncho by all means leave a comment anywhere you like all right I'm not going to talk anymore because once again the tutorial is like 100 hours long and I think you would like to get on with it how gorgeous is that thank you so much for watching oh and by the way towards the end of the tutorial I forgot to mention to weave in your ends so do yourselves a favor before we go on to the next part of the series <laughs> weave in these ends if you have any leftover ends here weave them in don't weave in that last green row I did cut it um, don't weave that in because you'll need that for um, slip stitching later. All right. So thank you so much for watching and good luck making the neck edge of your poncho. All righty, guys. So here we are. We're going to start with our collar. Just quickly, from memory, we had our green still attached here. So I think for argument's sake, I only attached it because I didn't kept it attached because I didn't want it coming undone. But if you leave a nice long tail like, let's say that, 
you can move that green out the way your tail is really long don't pull at it or tug at it don't pull it any loops just leave it there we won't be using the green again here we'll be going into a different color when we're ready to do our border rows but in the meantime the reason i'm cutting it is because we're going to be working on the um, neck edge now and we're going to have too many threads dangling and it's just going to get all awkward so where do we start from even though we are working from this angle here the bottom part right there we need to start from the top if we started up here and worked our way around that way we'll be working inside out and we don't want to do that we want to work the right side now find the right side of your work what's the right side I hear you ask if you're not sure and you're new face your work to you see those little V's you see right there one two three they're facing you if you had it the other way around and then you're looking at those V's those V's are at the back okay oops let's move that out the way so you can see those V's are at the black maybe the pink wasn't a good one to show you let's try the lighter color that's your front so when you're turning it around and you're looking at it this way you can't see the V's they're facing down that way all right so that's the back so look at your work find the right side an actual fact another way you can find the right side is where we left off here yes just run your fingers up the top there right right there run it around to your very next corner and that's where you're going to start when I say corner I'll show you exactly where it is in a minute you're grabbing your poncho let's see how far out we are we're out enough grabbing your poncho and you're straightening it up that's where your original end is that's where we finished off so you run your fingers up there run it down here and run it up there oh it's in the wrong spot anyway there you go so even i'm in the wrong spot so flatten your poncho out that's the middle right there but you don't want to pop it straight in the middle because that middle bit we need to join together it doesn't matter we can still do it in the middle there like that all right and that's it so we're starting on that corner there we are continue using our four point millimeter hook all right we've got our scissors we have our darning needle you will need that and you will need a stitch marker or two maybe just one i think at this stage we already have one popped in down there anyways all right so go towards your stitch marker and we have another one here too so there you go we have plenty hanging around now guys i'm having a lot of problems now because the um poncho is relatively big which means it's really awkward to keep on the uh, <laughs> bench now or on the table i should say all right so that's where we popped our stitch marker right there you're going to pop your hook right there right in the stitch marker area all right now it's not in the center there because we need that in a minute because we're going to close that up but it's in that corner all right now let's grab our cream your main color that you've been using all along now i've been using the cream all along so you all that cream there pop your hook i'm sorry pop your thread over your hook pull a loop through just gonna lock this stitch into place so that we can you know crochet the part of it and away we go one two and three and guess what we're going to pop our stitch marker right in that stitch there now if you remember correctly when we came to this section here we did our double crochet two together we're going to do exactly the same so yarn over your hook now you know all this because you've done it quite a few times throughout this this particular series pop your hook in that same space that you were in you've got three loops on your hook yarn over pull through two yarn over again jump straight into that light pink that i've got there pop your hook in pull up a loop you've got one two three four yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through the last three all right and then you do one double crochet in that pink i'm going to drop my tail now i'm going to crochet it. we're going to weave that in as well yes yes i'm still a stickler <laughs> jump into your next space with your three double crochets so you know this part guys this is a very basic part of our pattern all right and what you need to do before we continue is just get to 
the middle of your work. So you're here at the moment, yeah? You're gonna come all the way down here, right flat bang in the middle, all right? What I want you to do is pop your stitch marker. There's your pink, there's your light green, and there's a middle of the green right there. You're popping your stitch marker in that green, all right? When you get to that stitch marker, we have to do some work there, all right? So in the meantime, we are gonna continue crocheting our cluster sets across. All right, so keep going all the way across until you get to your very next square. And we need to join the two together, like we just did. And three. You know how to do all this bit, guys. You've done it before. Now, there we are with our join again. First square, or second square, I should say. Start your double crochet there with one. Now, this is the one where we join the two together. Start it, pull the loop through, yarn over, finish it in the next space, pull the loop through, and then pull through all three loops. Okay, I don't need to show you, you've done this a gazillion times before in a gazillion rows. So what we're going to do is just pick up the speed and I'll meet you at that very corner space right there. I'm not going to head off on your own and everything, I'm just going to pop it on fast because it's not that far away. Alright, so I'll pick up speed around there. All right, here we are at the corner. Here we go, look at the mess I've made. <laughs> oh, it happens, never mind. All right, so we are in this little, it's not really a corner, is it? It's kind of like a little, I don't know, valley, if you will. Okay, now ordinarily, oh, too far away, sorry guys. Uh, we would pop our double crochets in there and do your three and jump over to that one as well and squish them all together. Because we are using a different colour, that can look really awkward. And I'll show you three different ways. And then you can decide which way you would like to do this, okay? I will decide at the end the way I'm going to do it. But I do want to give you a benefit of the doubt because you might like to use the different ways, okay? So we're jumping into there. It's one big corner there, isn't it? All right? Corner, what am I saying? One big valley there. So you literally have to get into all three spaces ordinarily all right so we're going to try the all three spaces bit and you can see what i mean by why you wanted to decide what you want so we'll start off by doing your one in the first space now you're going to start your half double yes then you're going to start you don't have to do this but i'm just showing you first in your corner bit right there the green yes then you're going to go into the other green so you've got all of that on your loop pull it through and then you're going to finish off your double crochet right there right so that's one way of doing it now I to be honest with you did it and I actually didn't like it because I didn't like that look the drop look there that's one way then there are other ways you can do it there's two other ways um, I tried them both and I again didn't like it <laughs> <laughs> and I came up with one that was really good, but I'm going to give you a benefit of the doubt for the other way first. You do one, put one in there like so, and you put one in there, you skip that green all together, and you go like that. Okay, so you actually have skipped that space there again. And again, I didn't like this big dip open space. Then I did another way, which is the one I'm going to use now. This is the last one. This is the one I want to use. It doesn't necessarily mean you need to use this one, all right? It does also look a bit elongated, which I'll explain to you in a minute. Um, but I think the look of it when people are staring directly at you does look better. So I'm skipping both the pink and the green, but I'm going to jump into that green there with one double crochet. But I need this to be fairly tight when doing it. So you pop your hook in. So make sure all this is fairly tight. One double crochet. I say tight, but you don't want it, you know, to be pulling or anything. But tight enough where you don't see that gap in there. Okay. 
Then we're going to start the next double crochet like normal and we're going to do another one in there like normal. Then we're going to do another double crochet in there. So really what you've done, you've done exactly what I wanted to do, except we've done it all in that middle green space. Now this part here, really important to keep tight. You're going to skip that light green space and you're going to jump straight into the very next space right there. When I say tight, I'll explain that to you in a minute when you see it. Oh, look, I've left it loose already. <laughs> I tell you to keep it tight. What am I doing? <laughs> Messing up. Okay, here we go. I hope it's not too loud for you guys. I've got the camera right up to my face today because I really wanted to focus on this part here. Okay, which means I'm yelling in the camera. <laughs> Sorry, guys. All right, here we go. So have a quick look. All right. It's closed up like we said it has, and I think it's given a better look. However, later when we do our single crochet row, this can look really long because we've elongated it down to that bottom stitch and it can look like we've made that really, those stitches really long, which is why I wanted you to do them tight. Try that way. <laughs> which is why I wanted you to do them tight so that you can actually, so it looks like it's not so long. All right. It doesn't matter anyway because it does give it a nice look even if it is um, elongated. But if you wanted to do it the other way where you join these two corners together, by all means, you can do it that way. I just didn't like the look, so I'm keeping mine this way. And I would like for you to continue. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You don't need me here. Continue along. You don't need me here. You know how to do the rest. Continue along that way right there. Get to this little middle bit on the other side. And I will actually show you how to do that bit again because you know it can be a tricky part and it can look like you've got too many stitches all right so get to that corner bit i'm sorry let's call it a valley get to that valley bit there and i shall meet you up all righty guys here i am almost into our little valley there so i'm just going to pop my last double crochet set just before the valley okay because there is a space before the valley and you must fill that space in or it doesn't work I'm just going to move the poncho, that's better, you can see now. All right, so the way it looks again like before, you have your space there and your space there and the one in the middle. All three are connected, remember? So we're going to take out that stitch marker. All right, if we were to put our, like the three in there and then put those two together and then put those two together, we'd have far too much in the center. That's why we do it this way. So we skip that pink space we just jumped straight into the main green space we're going to skip the light pink as well so we're jumping straight into that main green space remember to keep this area nice and tight not too tight just nice and tight and do your normal double crochet and now with your next stitch you're doing two together And then you're doing another double crochet in that space. Again, keeping it nice and tight. And remember, you are jumping over that light pink corner and you are going straight into that next space. Okay, let me get this. So we're jumping over the corner and we're jumping straight into the next space, making sure we keep this nice and tight because we don't want that too loose. Let me show you what it's like if it is loose so you can have a look, see what I mean. So if I kept that loose, Oops, did a normal double crochet like that. Two and three. This is what you will have. You will have that big gap right there. See how nice and tight that is there? You'll have that big loose gap. And it looks pretty bad, okay? We want it to look nice as well. Of course we do. We want to look nice, yes. <laughs> well, I do. <laughs> <laughs> all right so we're popping in our normal cluster set there making sure we kept that nice and tight jumping into our next space with our cluster set and let me show you again what it all looks like so you can see if you are on the right path all right so I'll pop it down okay 
<laughs> Sorry, guys, the poncho's too big. I can't fit it in anymore. <laughs> can you believe this? All right, here we go. Get a nice close-up so you can have a look, see. And let's just pop it together like that so you can see. All right, so that's what you should be looking at. I know a lot of people pop it in there, that space right there, and that space there, and they skip this green bit altogether, but I found that very gappy as well. I found this was the best way for me. Again, you're welcome to use the other two ways I showed you earlier. By all means, whichever way you like, all three of them are good ways. I just found this one looked better for me. Okay, oh, there you go. So now, oh, what am I doing? You don't need to see this part. Oh, yes, you do. We're only um, literally <laughs> a few spots away. So we're just going to continue. Okay, so your poncho should now, with this row here, should have tightened up a little bit. Not a lot. But just that little bit so if it was dangling off your shoulders before it'll still be dangling but not as low I hope that makes sense so it should be nice and tight now which is good but when I finish we still have a few more rows to go Oops. One, two, and three. Last one before the stitch marker. One, two, and three. It's actually the last one for the row. So let's have a quick look, see? All right, so there's your stitch marker. Now remember, we started off and we have actually completed that particular space there. So really all we're doing here is slip stitching. Pretty much all we're doing. Okay, so you are grabbing your little hook and you are just popping it in that stitch marker space. You can take the stitch marker out if you like, it helps. And then you're just pulling a loop through when you find the loop. Just pull that loop through, pull it through the loop on your hook, pull up a loop and hold it there for a minute. All right. Now, if you remember correctly, when we did our squares here, we did that very first row of clusters that we've, that we've done right here. Then we did this little stitch right here. Oh, yes, we're going to do that again. I know, right? Pretty coolio, huh? Pretty coolio. So, uh, go back into that stitch that you were in before. Now, we've already chained one. We need to chain three here, but we've already chained one, so we're only going to chain another two, which is one and two. Now, in our first set, we are going to do our normal double crochet two together. Yarn over, pop it in your stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, in the stitch, yarn over, Pull through two and the three just so you know how to do that one you've done it before now you're chaining one two and three then you are going to double crochet one two three together yarn over pop it in your stitch pull up a loop yarn over pull through two like normal yarn over go into your next stitch pull up a loop yarn over pull through two like normal yarn over Pop it in the next stitch, pull a loop through, yarn over, pull through two like normal. Now you've got one, two, three, four loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all four loops. And you form that little peak up the top there, chaining one, two and three. You're going to do it again, but being very careful not to collect the stitch that you are already in there, okay? Your double crochet is sitting in there so you want to jump into that next stitch which is these three main stitches you're working with okay so pop your hook in and do your cluster set simple very simple well no it's not simple is it <laughs> chain one two and three which is why i'm going very slow for you remember not to get into that stitch we're going to jump straight into the next stitch with your three together nice and slow all 
One more. And there we go. Chain one, two, and three. Okay? Easy? <laughs> I know I say that all the time. All right. Making sure you don't go into that one there. You're going into your next one and you're doing your three together. Two and three. Chain one, two, three. All right. So what I would like for you to do now, <laughs> what I'd like for you to do now is, oops, grab your stitch marker. Now, do your stitch all the way until you get to, remember our big cluster stitch we did here right on our little valley? Just before that cluster stitch, get there and wait for me there, okay? Alrighty guys, there's the main centre. Let me bring it out a bit so you can see. There's your main centre. That's where the centre of your work is right there. I'll keep my thumb there so you can see. Alright, and I'll take that stitch marker out because that may just confuse you because I really should have popped it straight in the centre so you can see it. But I'm sure you understand what's going on. So there's your main centre. I still haven't chained my three, one, two, three, and I still haven't done my three together here. All right, so let's do that first. The last pink, where the pink is, you need to do your last three togethers. Three togethers, can I use that word? <laughs> Making up my own words here, here we go. All right, so now to get into that corner, we're not gonna be chaining three, or we're gonna have this massive loop. We're just gonna chain one. And then we're going to do the same here. We're going to do our double crochet three together, like normal, in our centre spot right there. I'm going to just pull the thread there. There we go. Try that again. So do you're doing your three together right there. Then you're going to chain one. And then you're going to do your normal three together in your next green, your light green. Two and three and then you go back to chaining three one two three and do your next set being careful not to pop in that first one there you're going right into that next set of your three double crochets together and i'll show you what you've done so you can see if it's the same one two three all right so you can see if it's the same as yours all right and there you go so what you have is there's your two pinks above your two pinks you have normal cluster set on your middle set you'll have your three together but you'll only have chain one in between but over on your normal sets i'm sorry there you will have your chain three all right hope that makes sense before you go on grab your stitch marker and pop it in the center of your next stitch and in fact i might just pop it straight in that center this time all right so you understand there's your center bit get to the center there and we will do the valley bit again all right all righty here we are at the valley i need to chain on my three one two three and do my last cluster set here which is the last pink you see one two and three okay now you're chaining one take out your stitch marker and you're doing those three together one two and three chaining one and then you're doing the next three together like normal one two three and then you're chaining three like normal one two three all right and just continue along on your merry way <laughs> and just keep going until you get to <gasps> guess what i didn't do i didn't put a stitch marker in one two three let's pop one in here we go so right keep going oh it's not that far anyway but still i'll pop a stitch marker in there anyway remember how we started our first cluster set just pop the stitch marker right at the very top not the chains just 
set right there for now. Um, that'll just show you exactly where you need to get to for now. So you really don't need to do much anyway. You just need to go from there to there. In fact, what I might do, I'll just pop it on um, speed motion and you can just watch me do it in speed. <laughs> With speed. Like, I could like pretend to be that fast, couldn't I? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> All right. So let's just keep going until we get to that stitch marker. And off we go. Here we are nearing the end of this row. One, two, and three. One, two, three. All right, now here we are. We've got our last set of three. We still need to do our three. Let's get a nice close up for you. Okay. Whoops. All right, so we still need to do our three. You've changed your three, yes? All right, so go ahead and do your last three. One, two, and three. All right, now to get in there, you still need to chain three. One, two, three. And then you are slip stitching not in the chains that we did, but in that top space. You'll actually see it. There's a gap right in there. All right, so you will see it and take that stitch marker out. I'll show you. So you're just popping your hook in that little gap space there. Oh, this is very close. Sorry, guys. Just grabbing your tail end. Pulling your loop through and pull it through the loop on your hook. All right. Pull up a loop for a moment because I want to show you exactly what you're going to do now. So now you've done your double crochet rows. Let's check that out so you can see what I'm talking about. You've done your double crochet row there. You've done your cluster row there. Now we're going into these three single crochet rows which will tighten up your work. It's very much an astringent, okay? So what you need to do, you need to decide really, your biggest decision is do I use the same colours here like a back flip? Do I use a light green, the cream, and then that dark green? Or do I use those green, cream, and then that green? Or do I just go and use another different kind of combination of colours? Entirely up to you. I would like to keep um, this in sync. I would like to do that set again there, but flip it. So I'm using that green first. Then I'll use the cream and then I'll use that dark green. Okay, so I'm going to get started. I don't know what colours you're going to use. I'd love to see them. So if you want to um, uh, flash those colours <laughs> on, our, um, on our page over at Wow Crochet's page on Facebook, by all means, go ahead. Otherwise, um, you can wait until we finish the whole poncho to do that. Either way, you could do it on Instagram and um, uh, tag me, hashtag me. And that way... Um, I'll get to see the colours that you have chosen as well. So in the meantime, we're going to take this chain undone and we're going to take that slip stitch undone. All right, keep your three chains there. You need those still. All right, go back in the stitch, drop your cream. Grab your green. Now I'm going to grab this one right here, whichever one you like. Mine is that one right there. So I'm grabbing this one. Pulling that loop through and pulling it through to the loop on your hook. All right, now here, once again, you could hold all those threads. So you hold the cream and you hold the tail of your green and your working end is right here. And that's where you chain one. Give it a nice tight tug. Pop a single crochet in the same space right there. This time, Naughty Mary, don't forget your stitch marker. <laughs> and that stitch marker goes right in that single crochet stitch there. All right. So in the meantime, all you're doing at this stage, and you should know this because we did this in part three, we single crochet 
three single crochets in your chain space one two and three and then one in your cluster stitch there and then three in the chain space one two and three one in the stitch very very basic three in your set one two and three and one in the stitch all right i think you get the picture yeah all right so what i want you to do once again continue in that manner now get to your very first corner here all right I keep calling it a corner it is actually a valley <laughs> there's your valley there's your cluster set that we started off with pop it straight into that very last big chain space and continue in that manner and I shall meet you up alrighty here we are we're up to our stitch marker I'm going to take that stitch marker out I've done my single crochet in the cluster set before I'm going to do my three single crochets in that space two and three all right now we did a normal cluster set here so we're going to pop a single crochet in that normal cluster set now we did a normal cluster set there but we also chained one so i want you to chain i'm sorry try single crochet in the chain one space yes single crochet in your cluster set single crochet in the chain one space single crochet in your cluster set and then three single crochets in your chain space one two and three one in your next cluster set i'll show you what you've done and there you go that is pretty much what you have done you've formed kind of a curve there your next row is going to be a little different with the cream and then your last row will close it all up so you don't see that wide there all right so in the meantime this is the best bit guys all you need to do is continue in that manner all the way across get to your next peak and I'm going to pop this in that third three chain space where I was just now and all you need to do is re-watch that section again okay and then just continue along that manner get to <laughs> where is it I've lost a stitch mark get to your green your green stitch or your pink stitch marker I should say and I shall meet you up alrighty here we are at the end of the row so now we're going to pop three single crochets in there one two and three now the cream still isn't hasn't been locked into place if you pull at it it still comes loose all right so we're going to slip stitch into that green stitch right there green stitch the stitch marker <laughs> But we're not going to pull through the green we're going to pull through the cream and that will lock all this into place pop your hook in that stitch where your stitch marker is drop your green grab your cream pull the loop through and pull it through to the loop on your hook just giving everything a big tug now just take out that stitch marker for a minute and just chain one for starters nice tight chain there grab your green because we're going to cut that in a minute but before we do we're going to crochet over a little bit of it okay because in the next round we're going to be changing to the darker green okay we've done our chain already we're going to do a single crochet in that stitch making sure you're crocheting over your green like so one grab your stitch marker again any color you like it doesn't matter all right and we are going to crochet over a little bit of this green and then we're also going to weave that in at the end because yours truly as you know is a big stickler so single crochet in every stitch across okay just like so like so now again you've done all this in part oh no it was three or four now i can't even remember now drop that green now and just go into your next stitch with your single crochet single crochet single crochet all right now before we continue all right once again there's our little valley now in the valley before in the row before we had three 
single crochets across. So when you get two, let me show you closer. That's the cluster set. Hang on, there's the um, middle. Okay, there's your cluster set right there before you get into your middle. All right, so just pop a stitch marker as close as you can, and I'll explain that to you when you get there anyway. All right, so go ahead and continue with your sim crochet before you do though. Yes, don't do a Mary and forget to cut this green thread. Cut it, you will not be using that anymore at all for this particular part of our tutorial. Continue in your cream all the way across, get to that stitch marker and I shall meet you up. Alrighty, here we are at the end of the row. I'm going to take out the stitch marker for a second. Where I would like you to be is to get your single crochet in your very last cluster set there. So pop your single crochet in there. I'll get a close up in a minute so you can see what I want you to do. Now this single crochet, one, two and three. This one belongs to the chain space. This one belongs to the cluster set and this one belongs to your chain space. So you need to single crochet all three of those together. So you go into the stitch and hold it there. Jump into your next stitch. Three loops on your hook, hold it there. Jump into your next four loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all four loops on your hook, single crochet in your next stitch. Don't leave that single crochet too loose, okay, because you don't want to see gaps. And then single in your, oops, nice tight next stitch. <laughs> single in your next. Mine are very tight, aren't they? <laughs> single in your next. Single in your next. Pulling up a loop and let's have a look at your valley. All right, so you have actually closed up that valley once again. By doing this and using your single crochets, your work is becoming more stringent. So that top part of your work is tightening up, which means it'll tighten up on your shoulders so it's not drooping off your shoulders. All right, so what I would like for you to do, get yourself to your very next valley and do exactly what I said. So what I'll do, I'll give you a nice close up of the stitch where you start your three single crochets together. There's your valley. So one, two and three together. So you're going to start your three together from there. That's where your um, stitch is. This is where your chain is. So right there, Work your three together here and then work yourself right back to your pink stitch mark or whatever that is. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Hello. I went straight past it. And work yourself back to the pink stitch marker and meet me there. Alrighty guys, here I am at the end of the row. I have two single crochets left. One and two. Alright. Now we're going to slip stitch into that stitch marker. But before we do, you're going to choose your next color. And mine was that color green right there. So I'm going to grab my next color. Get ready. Because we're going to pop it in that stitch marker. Oh, I think I've split a stitch there. Deary me. Pop it in your stitch marker. I just split a stitch. Sorry, guys. I realized that. I know why I split it. Because I did it so tight. <laughs> <laughs> don't do yours so tight guys how many times I say this in tutorials grab your green pull it through the loop pull it through the stitch see how tight that stitch was and then put it through the loop on your hook now because we're going to have to cut this cream I want you to crochet over that cream in a minute but for now grabbing the cream and the tail end of your green okay giving it a tug just so that you can do a chain one there nice tight chain one now grab your cream I want you to crochet over that cream we're going to weave in the green after so pop your green back in oh, that wasn't supposed to happen pop your green your hook back into the stitch you just made and working over your cream you are doing a single crochet 
And guess what guys, that was the hardest part of this row, seriously. And I've done a really tight single crochet. So at the end of this row, I'm gonna fight to get my hook in there as well. Don't do them so tight, everybody. Look, I can't even get the stitch marker in there. Hang on guys, I'm gonna <laughs> loosen this stitch up. <laughs> it's not good. I can't even get the stitch marker. I'm so naughty, aren't I? <laughs> All right, there we go. Okay. Now we are crocheting over that cream and we're going to weave it in as well. Now go into your very next stitch right there with a single crochet, single in your next, single in your next, single in your next. And drop that cream. I reckon three or four is plenty. But then you're going to weave it in as well. Don't underestimate it. It can come out in the wash. Single in your next. Personally, I don't wash my work in washing machines anyway. But it still can come out when you are washing your clothes. Okay? Keep popping a single. Now, I'm not going to stop it for a second because it's not that far off. Coming down to there. Oops. Alright, what we'll do, actually... And that will do. Grab our stitch marker and just pop it in that really thick stitch that we made in that previous row, right above our little thing right there, the middle section. Nice tight little stitch there. All right. And I'm just going to single crochet all the way across until we get to that stitch marker. And I might just pop our um, recording here on speed so that we can get there in a hurry. And I can show you what you do in that peak section not the peak keep calling it a peak in a corner it's actually a valley so go right ahead and single crochet all the way down to the valley and I shall meet you up there Almost there, guys. Sure are. You're going to love this part, too. You really are. <laughs> Nearly there. One, whoops. One more stitch. And I split that stitch. Oh, be careful. There we go. All right. Let me show you. I'm going to take out that stitch marker. So you can have a look-see at that valley right there. Now, the valley shows... Just pop this out for a second this is the stitch that you are in yes the next stitch is there and all you're looking at is your v's your next stitch is there your next is there your next is there and your next is there and those two there see that one right there has your three single crochets from the row before right in that stitch there there and there all right that's not the three single crochets, that's your three single crochets, and these are the other ones. So pop in your single crochet in that stitch there. If you're not sure, just look up the top where you see your Vs. You are popping your single crochet in every V that you come to. Alright, so what you've done is you've crocheted right over that corner, and it's... I keep calling it a corner. Let's try valley. And it's looking gorgeous. That stitch was a little bit loose there. I hope that's not going to be too noticeable later. <laughs> All right. So there you go. Let's have a quick look-see. And you can have a look. I'm just going to lay it down right there. And there you go. All right. Before we continue, guess what you're going to do? You're going to cut that cream. You are not using it anymore. You will be using it for our border rows eventually when we get up to our border rows I'm hoping I've got enough oh talk about yarn chicken <laughs> I think I have <laughs> I'm pretty sure I have all right so there you go what I would like for your toad all simple simple exactly what you did there all you're doing is a single crochet in every stitch all the way around you do it there in that corner right there you just look at your V's you stitch you stitch you stitch and then you get here and wait for me there and get ready for what's to happen next Alrighty guys, here I am at the end of the row, having my last few stitches left, and there you go. 
Now all you're doing is you are slip stitching at the top of your chain, pull a loop through, pull a loop through to the loop on your hook, nice long loop, because my dears, you have completed part six of your Rustaman Vibrations Poncho. Now you're going to weave that end in a minute, but for now, just quickly, I want to show you something so you know where you're at. That is where you are at. Oh, can I bring it out enough? I don't know. <laughs> now, okay, you have tightened it up a little bit. Now, I did mention in the live the other day that we're going to wear it, we're going to try it on, and I'm going to show you how to tighten it up even more. And I haven't done that yet because I want to stick to part to doing that in part seven because that's going to determine our length. However, when we try it on, if yours is still too loose, you're not doing anything different here. You are going to see these little spaces in here. You're going to make some drawstrings. And if anyone says to me that theirs are too loose, I'll show them how to do a drawstring. And you can pop your drawstrings through here. You can have your drawstrings dangling down here. And if you tighten it up, everything pulls in a bit. So it tightens up a little bit. That's why I didn't want to do it yet. I wanted to do that on part seven of our poncho. And part seven of our poncho will be adding extra length and, and or popping on a border row depending on whether it fits you or not anyway in the meantime <laughs> thank you so much for doing part six with me and that i mean it's simply gorgeous it looks like we actually planned that look to that look which we did i did um in the past <laughs> i just didn't know how it would come up on the poncho i've done this with a um a shawl i think some sort of shawl at the back so I wasn't really sure how that was going to come up. I knew how this part here would. But I wasn't really sure how that was going to come up because it's like a mirror image, yes? So there you go. That's done. Thank you so much for joining me with part six of our poncho. In part seven, I'll show you what to do to tighten up here. And we are working on some more length and possible border row, <laughs> depending on how long ours is on us when we try it on during part seven thank you so much for watching guys don't forget to like subscribe share and do all those wonderful things that you guys do for me i really appreciate everything you do um so and that's all i want to say really guys i mean doesn't that look fantastic oh. <laughs> thanks again and ciao for now